Hey there, today we're going to be changing out a pump seal on a Stay Right Supermax pump. And the reason we're doing this is basically this pump had been leaking in between the actual motor and the wet end. And you can see from all the calcium and corrode buildup here, it's been doing it for some time now. The longer they leak, the more likely moisture is going to be pulled up into this motor and it's going to ruin this motor. So here are the tools that I have on hand for changing out this pump seal on the Stay Right Supermax. And as you can see, we have a US Seal PS200. That's the seal that fits in here. I'll also have the authentic factory uh, pump seal in the description box if you want to use one of those. I have some regular silicone lubricant. We're going to lube up all the O-rings and gaskets inside the pump. And I also have a full rebuild kit uh, that if you want to order one in the description box also. And then we got a small pair of channel locks, wire brush for cleaning up things. 9 16 socket, 9 16 wrench. I have a half inch and a 7 16 wrench just in case we need to use it for the motor shaft. A couple screwdrivers, big pair of channel locks in case I have an issue getting the impeller off. And then just some uh, pool grade silicone so that way we can put a little silicone behind the actual pump seal. Um, also, it's pretty handy to have some rubber gloves just to protect your hands because that calcium does dry them out pretty quick. So before we get started, the first thing you want to do is if there's any shutoff valves on the front side of the motor or on the um, outlet side of the motor, you want to shut those. And what that's going to do is keep your water from flowing back to your pool. So that way when we get this done, uh, basically it's going to be a lot easier to get this primed just by filling the pump up. Once you have those shut off, the next thing is we're going to go ahead and drain our pump out by pulling out the drain plugs on the actual pump. So that way when we take the bolts out, we don't have water just gushing out of the sides at us. We can go ahead and get started by pulling it apart. And that's it. We can use a 9 16 socket or a 9 16 wrench on this. And we're gonna start by taking the actual bolts on the wet end side off first. And that's it, they're not very tight. Everything is plastic on these. As you can see, these bottom ones, just by the, the framing of this actual wet end on this, it is a little bit of a bugger to get a socket into these. And that's it. If you can't get one on to get it to start to loosen up for you, that's where your 916 wrench is going to come in handy. And that's it. These bottom bolts uh, hold the actual pump onto its floor mount. So once you take those two off the bottom, it should come right off of that mount. Once we get all of our bolts out, inspect them just to see what kind of condition they're in. Um, if they do have some uh, corrosion on them or whatnot, that's when we take our wire brush and you just want to clean those up good. With all of our bolts off, we'll just go ahead and slide this wet end off. Or if it's still mounted to the actual plumbing, you'll just pull on this motor and back it up out of there. So once your uh, motor's pulled out of your wet end, as you can see, we have our diffuser covering our actual impeller, um, our housing gasket, and then a diffuser gasket. So if any of these are in bad shape, I would just get a rebuild kit and actually replace these. Um, and like I said, I'll have a couple in my description box so you can see what they are. So taking off this diffuser, as you can see, there's just three bolts holding that in. And I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to take those out. I mean, you can use a nut driver if you have one of that size, but they're not in there very tight and they just unthread, so. Not a big deal. So with those three off, we'll leave those in the actual diffuser. And voila, there's our impeller. So behind this impeller is our pump seal. So we're gonna have to get this impeller off. There is also a locking screw in this actual impeller. So they're either a Phillips screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver. And uh, that's it, we'll have to take that off also. And those are reverse threads. So righty, loosey, Lefty, tidy. <laughs> All right, in order to get this impeller off, we're gonna have to lock this actual motor shaft in here so we can unthread it. In order to do that, we're gonna have to take this back uh, motor cap off. And that's it, you can either use your quarter inch driver or just a standard screwdriver will work also. Once that screws out, you're going to have to give it a couple love taps here. Just be gentle. It should 
pop that back off. And in here, you're gonna have the back of the actual motor shaft there. So this one in particular, a half inch wrench fits it. And there's also a little prong right here that'll actually hold your wrench. So when you go to spin it off, it locks it in place. And that's it. If you don't have an original motor for the actual Stay Right Supermax or a Pentair Superflow, and you have an aftermarket like AO motor, um, a lot of times this the back of this shaft is going to be buried. So the only way to get into it is to remove the actual capacitor of instead of being up on top of the motor, it's going to be over here. And there's just two screws holding that capacitor in. Take those out. It'll fall down, hanging on some wires you can actually get a wrench in there. So with our half inch wrench, that's it. I'm gonna turn it this way. So that's locked in place. And now we're gonna go ahead and take this uh, locking screw out of the front of this impeller. And like I said, it's either a Phillips screwdriver or a flathead. And like I said, it's got reverse thread. So ready loosey, lefty tighty. That's it, we'll get that out, like so. Put that in a safe place. All right, now we'll lock the shaft, and that's it. Sometimes you can get these off just by using your actual hand and some strength. Like this one just came right off. Um, in other situations, if the motor's older, and I mean, it's been through some good times with that pool, Bigger set of channel locks, but be very careful you don't break this impeller, but you can actually grip it and there's enough torque on these to actually spin that off. Another thing is if you don't have a set of these $60 huge channel locks, um, but you do change your oil on your car yourself, some oil wrench pliers also work pretty good and they're pretty gentle on the actual impeller. As you can see, they fit right on there. That's it, so we'll just undo our impeller And as you can see, our pump seal's right inside of there. And the next step is we're gonna have to pull this back. We've got a motor plate right here. And we have four more 9 16th bolts that we need to take out. And that's it, everything on here is not super tight. So and that's kind of it. There's a torque uh, setting for these. Um, I don't have a handy dandy torque wrench set. And I don't think any of you are gonna go out and spend a bunch of money on a torque wrench just for this motor. So that's it. We'll just put those back in nice and snug, give them an eighth of a turn and call it good. I've never had them come out on me. And that's it. Upon looking at the bottom of this uh, motor here, they have it hidden on the bottom so you can't see it, but it says assembled in Mexico. So the next thing I'm gonna do is in order to get this uh, motor plate off, we're gonna have to pull this pump seal off and we're probably gonna damage it quite a bit. Uh, I like to use a small pair of channel locks and that's it. We're just gonna give it some small tugs and there it slid off. So now that shaft is free to be able to pull that motor plate off. And here's the uh, dynamics of this thing leaking. You can actually see how bad it was. So. It was actually covering the floor at the University of Montana. Um, this pump was actually a filter pump on their um, underwater treadmill. So it's a pretty big one for the sports team. Um, but that's it, it was starting to flood their room. So, and they needed the treadmill immediately. So they or ordered a new pump overnight and uh, this is gonna be their backup. Off of there, we can inspect this shaft. And like I said, if there's any corrosion on it or it's dirty, just give it a few strokes with the old wire brush, clean up the threads on there, and it should be good to go. So give it a good inspection. And that's it. So inside this motor plate, we have the back side of this pump seal. And that's it. We'll just come to the back side of the actual motor plate here and give it a couple taps. In the back of that pump seal, the rubber boot, 
just pops right out. We'll inspect this actual inner ring here where it sits in there and make sure that's all cleaned up too. So if it's bad, we'll give it a little wire brush. Um, most of the time, it's just a matter of taking some paper towels and wiping it out. So the next step is we're gonna put our actual pump seal in. And uh, the first one is we're gonna go with the white ceramic piece that actually has the rubber gasket on it or the rubber boot. And that's it, that's gonna just fit in here nice and snug inside this motor plate. And that's kind of it. A lot of people just give this a little bit of an O-ring lubricant on the back side so it slips in there nice. I like to put a little bit of silicone actually in the motor plate and just kind of work a little bit around this back side. Not too much. I don't want it gushing out everywhere. So with a little bit of silicone around that whole area, we can go ahead and take this new pump seal and that's it. We'll just get it lined up. So it looks like it's going in straight. And then we don't really want to touch it much. So I'm just going to take the back of a screwdriver where I can get some leverage on it and just give it some pressure and push it in nice and flat. And there you go. As you can see, it's in there. Um, you can see it's all nice and flat. Everything's even. And that's how you want it. And then on the back side where we added the silicone, we can just kind of clean that up a little bit. And as you can see, We've got a nice coat all the way around the inside of that. All right, now that that's in, we're gonna go ahead and slip this back onto the actual motor. And that's it, This uh, if you've lost track of which way this was on there, it actually says top on the back side. And that's it, the top of the motor is gonna be where the capacitor is. Um, not a real easy thing. That's it, we just wanna work it on there. Like so. And then from here, we'll go ahead and grab our short bolts, the 916 16ths, and we'll just get those started threaded, tighten them down with the socket. So once we get these tightened down and they're nice and snug, I like to just give them a couple jerks on the old uh, socket, and I know they're tight enough. So that's it, it's nice and snug. Let's give it a jerk. She's good to go. So now we get to the other side of the actual pump seal and that's it. You're going to have a nice flat metal uh, side and then you're going to have this little lip uh, side here with the actual graphite that goes on that ceramic. And you want that little lip side with the graphite facing the actual white ceramic on the actual uh, pump seal. So we'll go ahead and just face that on and then basically as you can see we got this metal flange facing outward. And that's it. We're going to try to push that on. And that's it, that O-ring is giving us a little bit of grief. So, I mean, this stuff happens all the time. That's why we got our little bit of silicone lube here. I'm gonna slip a little bit inside that O-ring. It's gonna help it go onto that shaft a lot easier without pushing that little um, actual gasket out of there. So here we go. And that's it, you just wanna give it some pressure to where um, you're actually pushing the spring in and uh, that actual uh, metal ring right there is actually flush with that motor shaft. And you can see that that rubber gasket in there isn't just pushing out. So should look something like that. Next we're gonna take our uh, impeller, just make sure she's all cleaned up. And we're gonna go ahead and thread that on. And see if we can actually just hold that motor shaft until we get her fairly tight. And once she's there, we're gonna take our half inch wrench. We're gonna go ahead and slip it over the back side of that motor shaft. Like so. That's it, we're just gonna go as tight as we can go with our hands. Then we're gonna put that locking screw back in there. She ain't going anywhere. So with our locking screw, remember it's reverse threads. I'm gonna grab a little bigger screwdriver so I can give her a little extra. This is where I like to inspect all my gaskets. I mean, this pump's only six months old, so I'm, I mean, I'm good to go with just putting some uh, silicone lube on all of this, give them a little refresher. Um, but that's it, if you've been running your pump for years on your pool, I would definitely replace all these. And like I said, you can go down in the description box below and I'll have all the part numbers there. <clears throat> all 
All right, now it's time to put our diffuser back on here. And uh, on this, so we have the three screws that go into the actual threaded uh, holes. And then basically, if you don't remember which way this went on there, don't worry, it won't go on wrong. So there's a few, there's what, three pins on the back side of this diffuser that's gonna go in three different pin holes. So that's it, when it's in the right location, those pins will sink in, those uh, threaded screws are gonna go right into where they need to go. Once our diffuser's back on, we can go ahead and put this motor cap back on. So we're done back here. That's it, and if you had to take anything off to access that shaft, make sure you put it all back on how it was. That's it, it just slides back on into place. And go ahead and tighten this down with a quarter inch nut driver or a flathead screwdriver. So now that our motor cap's back on, we're gonna go ahead and slip this motor into the actual wet end. And that's it. It can be a little tight. And that's it, there's plenty there. So you have an extra about quarter inch there. So if you can't get that quite all the way in there, if you can get one of these bolts to catch, you should be able to suck it right into place. So with our four bolts, hand tight. Go ahead and ratchet these down with our 916 ratchet. And that's it, this pump is done. And as always, thanks for watching Pool Elementary. And if you wanna check out any of our other new pool videos as they come out, make sure you subscribe. And as always, another happy pool with Pool Elementary.